so Blackbeard might be the smartest character in One Piece. Yes, I know that just like Luffy, he often does very impulsive and foolish things, like for example almost being wiped out completely by Magellan and Impel Down, but when you really think about it, Marshall D. Teach had a plan that was over 20 years in the making and he executed it perfectly basically playing the entire world, which I just really have to respect. He joined Whitebeard as a teenager already with the intention to get his hands on the most powerful Logia devil fruit, the Yami Yami no Mi. He then waited patiently on board of the Yonko's ship, keeping his head low and biding his time. All that despite being ridiculously powerful all the while. Remember, he was able to hurt Shanks, one of the strongest people out there. <laughs> So instead of showing off his powers, he kept a low profile, already recruiting people for his future crew until finally, one of his crewmates actually got his hands on the devil fruit he was hunting for. Then he took his chance, killed his crewmate of over 20 years and left the crew. Uh, I mean, yeah, of course he did leave the crew. I'm already really impressed with the patience this man had. Just like Luffy, he always trusts in fate to find a way for him somehow. And as far as I can remember, it has always pretty much worked out for him so far. But the next phase of his plan is even more impressive and I can't believe I haven't put one and one together in my head so far. Because when you think about it, Blackbeard basically orchestrated all of the major events in the story so far. Maybe that was obvious to you, but to me that actually blew my mind a little bit. Think about it. Blackbeard's goal after finally consuming his ultimate devil fruit was going for the One Piece right away. For that, he needed to join the Yonko and become a force to compete with the likes of Kaido and Big Mom. So what does he do? Well, obviously he decides to get the the strongest crew possible. And if you don't have the patience and charisma of Luffy, or are as romantically active as Big Mom, Blackbeard figured that he'd just grab himself the strongest people available to him that are basically out of work right now. <laughs> But how to get into the most secure place on the entire planet, except maybe for Marijo? Easiest answer, pretty straightforward. Ally yourself with the world government so they basically invite you in. So now Blackbeard's first step is becoming a warlord. As you'll remember, he thinks about hunting down Luffy to get on the good side with the marines, but fails. Luffy, after all, just like him, is special. Something that Blackbeard, by the way, knows really, really well. And so fate offers him a different solution. I'm of course talking about Ace, who was hunting after Blackbeard to bring him to justice. Ace, <laughs> Once he realizes that Ace is intent on bringing him back to Whitebeard, a new opportunity opens up for him. He realizes that not only can he use Ace as a bargaining chip to become a warlord, but he can even orchestrate everything so that the marines will take on his former captain. After all, Teach also always had his eyes on the strongest paramecia, Whitebeard's Guda Guda no Mi. He knew that he would have to get past the man at some point anyway, not only to reach the One Piece but also for the Devil Fruit, and now he had all the cards he needed to play his big round. Okay, so he delivers Ace to the government, receiving the status of a warlord. He then enters Impel Down, gathers all the powerful people he wants into his crew, and then leaves directly for Marine Fort, where the Marines and Whitebeard's army had already weakened each other significantly. <sighs> And so walking in there with his army of legendary pirates, he takes advantage of the situation, kills Whitebeard and takes his devil fruit, only fleeing when Shanks arrives. Now finally, he has become a Yonko and is now able to seriously go after the One Piece, being at least on eye level with even the most powerful people in the One Piece world. All of that based on a plan that he made as a 16 year old. I mean, if that doesn't make him one of the most genius genius characters in the story, I don't know what to tell you. Actually, I do. If you want weekly One Piece content just like this, subscribe right now. Done?
Nice. As a reward, I'll tell you a super new Blackbeard theory in this video as well. Now, Teach is still a bit of a mystery. There's just so little that we actually know about him. And even though I do love myself some teas and mystery, I'm a very simple man, I still want to try and figure out as much about Blackbeard as possible today. Did you, for example, know that Blackbeard's favorite food is cherry pie? Oh, yeah, where is he? Huh? What's that? Oh, cherry pie is now you probably already know that Blackbeard is written as a foil to Luffy. That means that both characters share a lot of similarities but are the exact opposite in many other aspects. If we're being honest, Teach is probably Luffy's biggest rival when it comes to becoming Pirate King. He is the only antagonist in the story where I'm really concerned for Luffy and the other Straw Hats when the battle between the two undoubtedly will happen. Because Blackbeard shares two of Luffy's most important traits believing in his dream and trusting in fate to guide him. The only thing Blackbeard doesn't have is Luffy's compassion for others. He is cunning, meticulous, patient, manipulative, and cheats his way to what he wants. While Luffy is oblivious, reckless, impulsive, selfless, and often takes the burden upon himself in order to accomplish what he really wants. Now Oda basically smashes the similarities and polar opposites into our face during their first meeting on Jaya. <laughs> There is just so much symbolism in just this one scene here, so I decided to make an entire video about it that I strongly encourage you to watch after this one. Luffy's and Blackbeard's journeys are the exact opposite of each other. But what I found the most interesting thing, however, is that both of them wouldn't be where they are today without the other. Luffy begins his journey by obtaining a seemingly weak devil fruit through a father-like relationship with a Yonko. <laughs> Meanwhile, Blackbeard begins his journey by stealing a strong devil fruit by breaking his father-like relationship with another Yonko. Teach banishes Wapol from Drum Island and leaves it as a nation without a king, while Luffy banishes Wapol from Drum Island as well, but leaves it as a brand new nation with a new king. And as a result, Luffy can recruit Chopper. Luffy sails through the first half of the Grand Line, taking down the Shichibukai. Blackbeard sails through the first half of the Grand Line hoping to become one. But only when Luffy actually takes out Crocodile does Blackbeard get his chance. Luffy declares war on the world government while Blackbeard joins it. Luffy later infiltrates Impel Down in order to rescue Ace who was caught by Blackbeard who is only successful in recruiting all the level 6 pirates because of the rebellion that Luffy has started earlier. However, on the other hand, Luffy's only able to enter and influence the war at all because Blackbeard's crew had hypnotized the staff who controlled the Gates of Justice. When leaving the prison, Luffy uses his astonishing will to recover from Magellan's poison, and Blackbeard cheats and relies on an antidote to do the same. And then there's of course Marineford itself, where Luffy's will is completely broken while Blackbeard's will is vindicated. The lowest point of our hero is the highest of his antagonist. Even the way they become Yonko is completely opposite. Blackbeard defeated a weakened Whitebeard and the remnants of his scattered crew, while Luffy will defeat a fully powered Kaido and his entire army of beast pirates. Okay, now we all know that Blackbeard will be the major antagonist on Left Tail. However, as we know, there is an even bigger villain to defeat in the story. Emu, who I made this massive theory here about in case you haven't watched it yet. Blackbeard is a villain, yes, but he also lives with the exactly same mentality that Luffy does. He wants freedom above all else, and he also believes in the dreams of a new age. So Blackbeard embodies the same path as Luffy, but he will ultimately lose. Because Luffy is reaching the top of the world the quote-unquote right way. <laughs> okay, so what's the takeaway? here. It's that Blackbeard is one of the most influential characters in the story. Someone instilled the idea of the Yami Yami no Mi in his head as a kid, and just like Luffy, he spent his whole life aiming to become Pirate King. And so of course this wouldn't be a proper Blackbeard video if we didn't theorize at least a little bit. 
or actually a lot. <laughs> the big question is of course where Blackbeard got his drive from. Who told him about the Yami Yami no Mi and why does he actually want to become Pirate King? At this point I think it would be pretty surprising if Blackbeard was not related to Rox D. Zebek, at least in some way or form. Since Blackbeard and Luffy mirror each other, that means that Blackbeard also shares not only the concept of dreams, but also that of inherited will with our protagonist. And so when you consider how Shanks inspired Luffy's journey, seeing in him the one who could inherit Roger's will, it would make a lot of sense if Luffy's major competitor would inherit the will of Roger's biggest threat. And not only has Teach made Beehive Island Rox's former headquarter the center of his operation, but he even named his main ship after the man whose name no one is supposed to really know the Saber of Sebek. I mean, Sengoku says so himself, most people today don't even know that Rox existed and those that do only remember him as Rox, not his last name Sebek. So I think it's pretty clear that Blackbeard must have had a personal connection or at least a deep fascination with the man. I know what you're thinking now. So is Blackbeard Rox's son? Now timeline wise, I think this would work out pretty well. Blackbeard is 40 years old and grew up as an orphan. Rox was killed 38 years ago, I think. So this would mean that Blackbeard was two years old when Rox died and should Rox have been his father, his death would leave the two-year-old Blackbeard on his own. And honestly, I think it's quite possible that Blackbeard genuinely resented Whitebeard for leaving his father to die while he... Opa. Okay. A surprising character that might give us some hints at Teacher's backstory is actually Orochi. Yes, I know no one wants to talk about Orochi, but listen to this. Orochi was born to the prosecuted Kurozumi clan, one of the six royal families of Wano. Interestingly enough, Kurozumi is the only family whose name does not have the kanji for moon in it. Instead, it translates into black charcoal. And so through backstabbing and trickery, Orochi has climbed his way into a position that is not his. Not only that, but he has killed and betrayed the people who took him in all in the name of revenge. And even more than that, he has demonstrated himself to be a coward in the face of danger and death. And I hope you'll agree that this parallels Blackbeard pretty nicely. Even though he's a member of the D-Clan, he doesn't share much of the classical D-traits. I mean, they're all strongly willed, positive individuals with a stark sense of compassion and loyalty, laughing in the face of death. Both Orochi and Blackbeard also executed and ridiculed the very person who took them in while broadcasting the event live. We know that Blackbeard doesn't sleep and neither did Orochi as a kid, claiming that he was too scared. Both of them getting handed strong devil fruit powers to secure their position. So could Orochi's prosecution and quest for revenge be a hint at Blackbeard's childhood for being the son of the most dangerous man on the planet? And of course I also want to talk about Blackbeard's ability to have multiple devil fruits. And I have a theory I bet you didn't hear yet. Now, there are a few really popular ideas already out there. One is that it's a special feature of the Yami Yami no Mi to absorb powers. However, given how notorious the fruit is, it's very unlikely that the Gorosei wouldn't know about it. Same goes for the Cerberus fruit theory, though I do like that a bit more. A new theory I really enjoyed and that you might have heard about is that Blackbeard is actually a squid who have three hearts and eight arms, just like the three heads and eight crossbones on the Jolly Roger. However, I've stumbled across another theory I don't think I've seen discussed anywhere before, even though I sadly don't know the author. Blackbeard might be inspired by the Barbarossa brothers, or the Redbeard brothers. The story goes like this. There were three brothers. Their mother was named Katarina, same as Blackbeard's crewmate. The older one was a pirate, while his two younger brothers were working with their father. After his father's death, the two brothers joined the eldest one and became pirates with him under the Crescent Moon flag. And coincidentally, Katarina Devon is called the Crescent Moon Hunter. The number three is closely connected to Blackbeard. He has three guns and his pirate flag features three skulls. And we all know that a pirate flag describes the captain pretty perfectly. And of course, we have this notorious scene on Jaya. So, 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 so
As I explain in detail in my scene analysis of this, the Blackbeard that Luffy meets in the bar and the one that he meets outside are clearly different people. Luffy doesn't recognize the man he fought with about cherry pies and both him and Zoro clearly state that Blackbeard is multiple people. Also remember this moment from Impel Down? <laughs> Blackbeard says that Luffy's haki has improved, but he would only know that if Luffy had actually used it on Jaya. In other words, him and Zoro unconsciously used their observation haki here, all riled up from the fight back in the bar. Okay, so here is the twist. Blackbeard has two other twin brothers. There are three Blackbeards in total. And so when he ate the Yami Yami no Mi that is explicitly shown as capable of absorbing humans as well, he was joined by his two brothers, just as in the Barbarossa story. And so he hid his two brothers inside him, which might explain why Blackbeard was still eating the pie when Luffy already left the bar, Kiss, it was a different brother. Either that or he just eats like hell, which I admit, is also entirely possible. Having three different people would also explain the varying personalities Teach displays. <laughs> On Marine Ford, he had to cover himself up to let his brother out and had him eat Whitebeard's fruit. And when you saw Blackbeard in Marine Ford with two different powers, one in each hand, the hand that uses Whitebeard's ability wasn't actually Teach's hand. It was his brother's. Teach used the Yami Yami no Mi to pull his hand inside him and let his brother's hand out. So if you believe that he used one different devil fruit with each half of his body, I think you're wrong. Teach has the Guda Guda power in his right hand, the Yami Yami in his left hand, and now look at this. Here the Yami Yami is now in his right hand and he uses the Guda Guda one with his left hand. And now if you look really closely at Blackbeard's right hand and compare it to this one, the rings in his right hand have disappeared. Now this could of course be Oda being a bit sloppy here with the drawing, but what if it's not? Don't you also ever get the feeling that Teach kind of looks a bit different whenever we see him? Could that just be the other brothers? Now this may sound a bit weird, but I feel like the biggest giveaway we have to this are actually his teeth. No matter how many panels I compared, different versions of Blackbeard have different levels of dental hygiene, I guess? One has a lot of gaps, one just a few, and this one here doesn't have any at all. Now it's only in the manga, but it's definitely deliberately done. There is the super cruel one with a complete set of teeth that we see in Impel Down. Then there is the one with one middle tooth that we meet in the bar on Jaya. And finally, there is one with two gaps on the top right, which is the most common version. And thus I would guess the Teach that ate the Yami Yami no Mi. He ate the strongest Logia, his brother ate the strongest Paramecia by transferring the fruit in the same way as shown on Punk Hazard, and now there is a third brother left and he'll probably eat the strongest mythical zone. Now if you really want to fully understand how important Blackbeard is however, I strongly recommend that you check out my scene analysis with him and Luffy right here. Thanks for watching.